Hello, beautiful friends. How are you? Happy Sunday. Um, I just wanted to play a little bit this morning, and I had an idea. I'm not exactly sure if it's going to work, but we're going to try it out. We're going to be playing with a 24 by 36 gallery wrap canvas. I have put a white base coat on. This is the ring that I've been using. Literally take one of these 16 ounce cups and I t cut the top inch off. So that's all that is. Nothing fancy. Easy. Um, my colors real quick. I have titanium white from Liquitex Basics. I have Liquitex Basics phthalo blue. I have DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in 24 karat gold. And this one is a very cool color I love. This is Chroma Molten Metals in Rojo Gold. Beautiful, beautiful color. It's kind of like a, a copper with a lot of red in it. Very pretty. Then this one is a little bit of a love child of a couple different things. This is Sargent's Festive Green, but it was obnoxious green, sorry. It was like way too Christmassy, so I added some black to it, and then it looked really black, so then I added a little bit of Liquitex Basics Thalo Green in there, and now I kind of like it. So I'm not sure how this is going to all play well together, especially the green and the red, because that makes brown. So we're going to try to make, keep those two separated. Keep them separated, right? Um, so maybe like that. We'll see what happens though. Let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to tell you about my pouring medium real quick is Liquitex pouring medium and uh, the paint. So I had about 60 grams of pouring medium, about 30 grams of paint. I add about 10 or 20 grams of water depending on the thickness, like the phthalo blue always takes more water, the white always takes more water, the deco art on the other hand barely needs any water at all. And then after I've combined the paint, pouring medium and water, then I add Floetrol about the same amount as the pouring medium, so it's about 60 grams. Lately I've been using a little bit less Floetrol um, to just get it to the right consistency because I think I wasn't paying attention once and I just put way too much in and everything was way too thin and I didn't like it. So since then I've been like really cautious about not using too much and not over thinning my paint. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a base coat on here. This is just titanium white and Liquitex pouring medium and a little bit of water. So I'm going to pour another little puddle right in the center. And we have wind today, so this will be fun. Okay, I'm going to put our ring in. I'm going to pour a little bit around the edge of the ring just to let it know that it's going to have to slide around. Okay, and a little bit more in the middle. Okay, let's start. Uh, I'm going to start with some Rojo Gold and see what happens. So what I wanted to do, what I did on the Sea Dragon one that I really liked, I love the cells coming out and I want to have that effect too, but when I was trying to get it out, I actually was turning the ring and it looked really cool and made this beautiful swirl. So that's actually what I want to explore a little bit more today rather than just making cells. So here we go with the Rojo Gold right into the middle, nice thick layer. Trying not to drip onto my canvas, but okay, we're gonna put some real gold in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna try not to use too much white. Let's see, I'm gonna put some blue in. And then I'm gonna put some of this green in. Interesting, there's a bunch of white leaves that must have moved a lot. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to gold. And then, hmm, I guess I am going to put some blue again. And then I'm going to put some more of the Rojo gold. So we'll see. We'll see how these colors all work with each other. I'm going to put more gold on the top. Now I know some people actually tilt this while the ring is still on there so that's what I'm going to try to just see what happens. It's still kind of oozing out of there. Let's just let it go that way a little bit and see what happens. Looks like it's staying in the ring. But see, I don't like this this part where it kind of like scraped away. That's all right. Get back that way again. 
Okay, so this is where I want to do that swirly thing now. I think that's really cool. Okay, and I'm going to put another puddle here. Put that back in. I'm going to start with the green this time. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, so my paints are not very, very thick today. They are mixed so that if I drizzle it off a stick, it does not form a mound. It sinks immediately. But they're also not watery. And this is, I think, because of the Liquitex pouring medium, it's got a nice, not plasticky, but a very smooth, almost like clear nail polishy sort of finish to it. I'm trying to see if I blow on it, will it? Because I don't want to put more white in there. A hurricane happening here. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of white in just to get that other color moving. And now I am going to actually, well, it's still sinking now, so that's really cool to watch. Okay, now I'm going to twirl it. Because I like that twirly thing. This looks really cool to me. I'm going to put this in here and I'm just going to twirl it. Okay, we're gonna do one more little one over here. Not very big. I just want to put more red. I think I might even just do red and gold in this one. Whee! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. A little bit more red in there. Because as you pour the new color in, it pushes the one underneath it out. That's really cool. Okay. Come on. Get it out. So you're under there. There you go. Okay. Oops, we forgot the white. This is going to be the last one, I think. So this is, again, I'm not looking for any serious specific result I'm playing. I'm trying to figure out the reactions of what happens when I do this and when I do that. And I really think this is how you grow as an artist, me willing to take the risk. A lot of people say, you know, I don't want to waste the paint. I don't waste, waste the paint. But you know what? What if you make a masterpiece? That's not wasting your paint. What if you learn from the process and you figure out what not to do? I don't consider that a waste at all. I consider that amazing. All right, I like that. Okay. I love that. That is so pretty. Okay. So, let's see. What do we want to do? I want to put a little bit of white around the edge of this because I don't want to lose it. And so that way that white will go off instead of what I want to keep. And again here, I want to keep this part. There's a lot of paint on here though. It's not like we have to worry about not having enough paint. Okay, let's tilt this baby a little bit. Nice and slow. I don't want to lose too much of the design. I mean, I know it's going to distort anyway. I haven't even torched it yet. Now the paint is moving nice and evenly, not too fast. It might roll over itself just a little bit, but that's okay. I think I want to leave that corner white, actually. Go off this just a tiny 
leave it. take the weight of the paint back this side because everything is over here like it's a lot heavier on this side right now so just nice and slow not rushing it I'm letting it do the work I'm letting gravity just move it down the side of the canvas because I don't want a lot of blending I do want the colors that are separated to stay separated remember where we're trying to keep the green and the brown away from or the green and the red away from each other so if I start tilting really fast, they're going to blend, and I don't want that. So we tilt nice and slow, and then we're going to go off this direction. And see that white that I put around the back of that is going to move and allow the paint to just slide and glide off nice and easy. Right like that. Go over the corner. There. Come back to the midline more. Amazing. How does it miss the edge? I watched it go over. I swear. <laughs> okay. Back to the center. I'm just moving the weight of the paint, letting it go from this right edge over here where my thumb is wiggling back towards the middle more. Turn it around for you so you can see better. And we're just going to go off this bottom edge here. I am letting it stretch a little bit. It's a little fast over here, but that's okay. Because it's getting windy and I don't want my paint to set up. So I'm going to come over this side a little bit and we're just going to go over this bottom edge. And see, there's, uh, see how fast the paint is still moving? That means there's still a lot of paint on here. So I'm actually just going to let some of it go off. This side is beautiful. It's already starting to sell up. So we're almost done, because once those cells start, you don't want to keep moving it. I'm going to edge, I'm going to move this back this way. So now we're going to stretch this top edge and bring the weight of the paint back to the middle. Turn it. And we're going to stretch this top edge now. And bring it down and let that stretch and start to sell. Do you see there's still a lot of paint moving there? Actually, I think I'm going to take some off of this edge because there's a lot. Get rid of that white blob. Yeah, see, this a lot of this has to go. Okay. This may be a little bit too much. Hopefully we can get this side to come back so our cells aren't all distorted. So that's the, you know, the gamble. Do you move it and get, I would rather move it and get the extra paint off of there and have slightly distorted shapes because these are all going to poof up and get bigger anyhow. So, okay, let's look at what happened for a second and see if it's what we wanted, what we want, how we want it composition wise. Okay, so this is the Rojo Gold in there, which is amazing and it's really cool because it's actually got green lacing in there and they stayed separate so we don't have brown which is awesome um, and that's because we put transition colors we put brown we put uh, gold and we put blue in between the green and the red so they didn't blend at all what we might see is a little bit of the blue and the green blending or the blue and the gold blending or the gold and the red blending but not the green and the red blending up here is beautiful i love this color this is like that's the rojo gold mixed with the gold you know, it's kind of stupid that I don't have any paint on that corner. Ah! Okay. No, it's not. It's not? It doesn't look weird? It looks weird to me. No. Sorry. <laughs> I have to... Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of blue. I'm just going to put down some of my colors. And let that tilt off. I'm not going to try to mess with the design that's already there that's a bad way to do it. You risk ruining the rest of your canvas. I and mean, since we've already got cells coming up, I definitely don't want to do that. I 
mind, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to be fluid with how you do things. It's okay to, oh, I made a mistake. I got to fix it. I'm actually going to like kind of swipe these a little bit to sort of match what's been going on over there. Okay. Paint. Don't freak out. <laughs> it washes off. You, not your clothes. <laughs> I have now <laughs> two drawers that are just clothes covered with paint. It's hilarious. Ooh, let's torch it. We haven't even torched it yet. So the only thing that I'm not completely crazy about is this center. But there are these beautiful green veins through the gold, and there is some white veining and lacing through the gold. This lacing sounds better than veining. But I'm kind of tempted to just... I can't get a little tiny bit of some more color in through there. Okay. See, it doesn't have to be really, really, really complicated. Just something to break it up a bit so it your eye doesn't like get stuck on it and go, oh, I don't like that. And you see that gold is going to eat a lot of that green that I just put on there. So it's going to end up turning into like a nice, this thin veining, which is going to be really neat, actually. actually. Let's take it down just a touch more into here. That's cool. I like that. Okay. Let's torch it. Torchy! Hi, honey. cool I love several things about this these are beautiful little cells coming up along the edge this color is like a dark apricot or peach it's the rojo gold mixed with the gold this is beautiful I love these little cells and this rojo gold part has all this blue lacing and gold lacing it's just gorgeous beautiful cells popping up through here I love this that I put in there that's cool this part is gorgeous. It's so soft and like pretty. That's the rojo gold with the gold and then there's like white on top of it and then there's some blue lacing in through there. Really beautiful. And there's some really cool little cells popping up through the bluey green. I like this a lot. I love this piece. And this part is really cool. Do you see there's a little bit of the mixing over here? Just slightly with the, the red and the green and the blue is kind of getting a little bit murky, but they're still separate, so that's good. This, I didn't want to tilt it too, too, too much. Should we put another green thing through here? Or no? Maybe not the same green thing. Just a little tiny bit of something in there, though. It's a little bit too, too much solid space. There we go. And I don't like two. I'm going to do three. And I feel like we need one more of those somewhere. Okay, that's enough. And see, the only reason that I feel very confident doing that is because I know what that gold paint is going to do. I know that the DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics eat other colors. So... That's why I'm not worried about putting a big thick stripe through there because I know what's gonna happen. I know it's gonna eat it and it's gonna turn into this pretty vein. So this is what you get with the experience of playing with something for a long time and experimenting with it. You start to know how it's gonna react and that is invaluable. So I think this is awesome. I'm very happy with it. Molnir, what are you doing out here? This is Molnir, my hammer that I put my pins in with. <laughs> I love him. I love Thor, so that's why he's well near. Anyway, so this is so pretty. Can you get like a 
close up along that edge right there. And I love these drips. Look at, so I just wanted to say something about the drips. If I'm finished painting and I have pretty drips on the table, I do do dips. I do use that paint. I don't just throw it away right off the bat. I do dip several either canvases or canvas boards in there. So it gets used. Sometimes if it's and I change the plastic out. Every time we shoot a video, I put down a clean plastic so I can just scrape that paint up. It's not a big deal. In this case, I wouldn't scrape it all into a cup because it would turn into mud. But there was one that I did with the Apricots on Mars piece that had a, like a black cherry-ish color and that was the drips from the day before. So I do use them. I do try to reuse everything as much as possible. I like it. I think it's really cool. And uh, I will take some close-ups for you guys and some stills, and I will post the video soon. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this beautiful Sunday morning, and I hope that you guys have an amazing day and you, you know, do something wonderful. This one is very cool. I'm very happy with how this turned out. Um, I think you should try it. The open cup is really, really fun. And, you know, don't have any expectations for the outcome and see what happens. Play with stuff. Learn your paints. Learn your pouring mediums. It makes a big difference in the ultimate outcome of what you're doing because you know how something is going to react. Thank you all for hanging out with me on this beautiful, windy Sunday morning. The wind is actually driving my husband kind of crazy. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. If you can, thank you, Brian. I appreciate all your help. You're wonderful. Yeah, so... I'm going to just lift it up real quick so y'all can see it again, how cool that is. There we go. Go do something awesome today. Bye. Okay, so this is a couple of days later, the dried piece. Um, I really, really enjoyed this one a lot. It was so much fun to do, and I really love how it has evolved and turned into something amazing. Um, when I was watching the video... I saw all that dappled sunlight shining on the painting and it was just, it was really beautiful and very reminiscent of The Little Mermaid where she's in her treasure trove and the sunlight is just filtering down and it was so pretty. So I've decided to call this one Ariel's Treasure. And uh, I think also those gold cells really, they feel like bubbles rising to the surface to me. So it was just very, very pretty. I loved painting this one. Um, I hope you guys like it. There's some really beautiful parts down here on the left side. On the bottom, there's this kind of peachy coral color from where the Rojo Gold mixed with the gold. And uh, as you go up to that upper left corner where I didn't have any paint, and then I went and poured some on. And then if you look in this section, there's that beautiful whole section of gold bubbles on the green background and the blue background. And it just came out really pretty. And then in the very center where I put those green streaks through that big part of gold in the middle you see how it is the gold paint ate it and it became very thin lines and looked like that marbling or veins of color through the gold is very very pretty so i really really enjoyed making this one and i i really encourage you guys to play with this technique because it was a lot of fun just make sure you have enough of your background paint and you have enough paint to do what you want to do Thank you so much for watching the Hangout. I really do appreciate your support, and I love to hear from you. Your comments make my day. You guys are so nice. I, I can't even tell you how much it means to me. Um, if you want to see more of my artwork, you can check out Mina Villegas Art on Facebook. And I am working on a way to make it a little easier to buy some things from there if you so desire. I will see you guys for the next one. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.